Come to the couch, the couch of truth. How are you? You've got notes. I have notes. Two minutes is still sticking yeah. between us. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm not. Okay, thank you. I'm here to share a story about depression. I can say I was a happy kid. Uh, flash forward, come to junior high grades seven and eight. I was not happy anymore. I was very aware that I wasn't one of the cool kids. However, that's decided. And in people thinking I was a loser, that's, that's really what I was aware of. I, started to believe that at some point. That's how I saw myself. I was depressed. It, was, it went beyond being unhappy. I, I had the feeling constantly 24 hours a day that since this didn't work, nothing was going to ever work out for me, that I was never going to get what I want to be happy. And I never thought, you know, the world is a terrible place or anything like that. I just thought it sucked for me. And in grade nine, it seemed like this is forever. I lost my father when I was nine. He killed himself. When I was in high school, it started to make sense to me because I, I've been diagnosed with depression and bipolar disorder. And everything that I remembered from his grumpy mood swings and how we ended up leaving started to make sense. I understood it because I was there, because I was so close to doing something stupid. Got it. You mean you understood w what his is, state yeah. of mind? I get it. In the last year and a half, I have experienced so much pain and trauma. I was diagnosed with a chronic illness um, or genetic disorder, I guess. It was so weird for me because in the past, I really struggled with an eating disorder. But with a chronic illness, I was like, I might never get better. What am I going to do? Who am I? I've experienced blatant transphobia and homophobia by medical professionals who just have no idea the impact of their ignorance um, on my health. Because I was so sick, I ended up having to leave my job and deal with poverty. And then my marriage of six years just fell apart out of nowhere. You've had a great year. So I ended up having this huge internal crisis where I just thought, is it even worth keeping keeping going. I had been thinking about suicide for a long time. And I recognize that this is a very extreme thing that I'm considering, yet it made perfect sense. Meanwhile, my parents, I mean, did everything I could, showed concern, took me to therapists, but I was unwilling to engage in that process in any way. So one morning towards the end of the school year in grade nine, I swallowed a whole bottle of extra strength painkillers. And when that didn't do anything, I jumped off a bridge. Mm. Thank you. And I mean, against all odds, I'm very lucky though, because against every odd, I, I survived. I lost my sense of sight, but my brain is intact. I'm, I'm still me in that. I just can't express how lucky I feel to be alive and still be myself. By the time I got to college, I was severely depressed, far away from my family, um, and ended up doing the proper things, and I got help, and I got medication that works well for me, because that, for me, that was the right path, and I was in a better spot to kind of start grieving 25 years after the fact, mm -hmm. and actually process it emotionally in a way that wasn't just he was sad, I am sad, therefore we're connected. And thinking that that was poetic in some twisted way, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I could actually think about it logically, which was very soothing. It must have been a very confusing time, but when you go back, do you remember any of those thoughts that sort of like flooded in when you realized that you got through the other side of that jump and found that you were alive? Oh, yeah. It's, it was a lot to deal with, I mean. I bet, and you were also, you know, when you were 15. There is a period of time that I don't remember. I was, you know, I, I, coming out of an induced coma was actually my first bit of consciousness. But I mean, I think at the time, it was just a hating the world sort of thing. And again, not like the world is a bad place. It was just, I, it took me so long to recognize that, you know, I have a place here. 
because it, it was relearning a lot of things from scratch in that way. So right. I was in a position where I couldn't, you know, go to my room and shut the door and just kind of live life that way. I, I really had to interact. And it was, I think then finding out, you know, that there's no not sort of cheesy way to put this, but the world isn't so bad. You might not like it, like everybody, you might not like everything, but you don't have to. Your spot in the world can be okay if you work at just being a part of it, you know? You can't, you can't hide from your own life. You've had a relentless era, <laughs> but it's amazing. You seem really happy despite, <laughs> despite <laughs> that. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes when it all piles on at the same time, it feels a little unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> but that it fucking happens that way and it's real. I've also had a relentless era. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I'm a happy person today, and I still have bad days, everyone. Everyone does, I'm sure, but a big difference now is when I have a bad day, I recognize this was a bad day. I'm hopeful and expecting that tomorrow will be a better one. When you're depressed, it, or at least when I was depressed, I didn't have that hope, let alone that expectation. It clouds your thinking, it's an illness, you know, and something that I wish I could have told my 15-year-old self is that as scary as it is to open up to somebody, to put your trust in them, you know, maybe a professional, maybe somebody you don't know, is so scary, but you have to be brave because you have something that's making it so that you're maybe not the best person to make decisions for yourself. I wasn't brave back then, and I not only hurt myself, I hurt everyone who cared about me. And I don't live in regret, but to people who are suffering from depression, there are resources, even if it doesn't make sense to you right now, that sometimes you just need to put your trust out there. And that, I think that could make a world of difference. A lot of people made comments about like, well, you know, good on you for being strong enough to get proper help. And it has nothing to do with strength. And that always, I hate you know, people like suicide being the coward's way out. It drives me crazy. My father was, born in late 40s, early 50s, I'm not sure. Strong dude who worked physical labor in a small town. You don't talk about feelings, you drink your feelings. It's because of my generation and my gender and the fact that I had then moved to a large city that I was able to get help. Mm. It's not strength, it's privilege. Like I'm in Toronto, so like if I, I know several places that I could go from having a breakdown at three in the morning because that access is there and it's free. There is so much fear in the unknown of having no backup plan, <laughs> but it gave me space to just do the things I loved. And I listened to your music, which really got me through it. I would go to the beach and I'd do Tai Chi and I'd make art. And when the spaces I needed didn't exist, I just was like, I'm gonna make them. So I started a group for trans folks with eating disorders so we could all support each other. It just ended up being like this, this time and space that helped me figure out you know, who I am. And it brought me to community and it let me listen to other people's stories. And as hard as this has all been, um, it's been really nice finding some like joy in like the hard things. And, <laughs> um, and it doesn't fix like the hard stuff. It doesn't fix the poverty. It doesn't fix the transphobia. But realizing how much support I had in these moments and you know, really paying attention to the times when I could just like relax. It just gave me so much hope. How is it possible? How did you wind up so fucking well adjusted? Well, first point? of all, thank you. Uh, no one's ever said you are so fucking well adjusted. <laughs> well, it seems to me that like your your like your take on and vision of the world and does actually seem incredibly like grounded and and balanced and like you could have just become okay. this really bitter angry person and instead you seem like you're not. So what do you attribute that to? Perspective, honestly, and I value what I have. I have a girlfriend who I adore. I have loving, supportive family and friends. And I think it's the lack of depression. Maybe I was just born with a positive outlook and I acquired this thing that really does put a filter on the way you perceive everything. Mm -hmm. And that's made the difference. So whether it's no longer having a chemical imbalance, no longer being a teenager, because 
I mean, maybe that's not easy for anybody, right? The big difference is seeing things clearly. And I really think seeing things as they are, because I did not when I was depressed. The, I mean, the metaphor and the poetry, and that it's is right obviously there. endless. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm in Canada, which means I have access to a better conversation around mental health and access to proper health care. And like, I've got a head start because of where I am. Even just to have that awareness, to know that your government kind of gives a shit about you and that people are actually assuming that we want to live in a culture where we take care of one another and we have those resources. Just that baseline understanding, I think, changes the way we move through the world. And, uh, and I'm jealous, Canadian, <laughs> and way, way, way delayed, but I'm sorry that you Thank you for creating a space for other people. It's good. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do, right? Yeah, we just it, have to. If it doesn't exist, fucking make it. And it's not that hard. That was what like, blew my mind, was that it was so easy once I just started putting it out there and people started showing people up. People will help. Yeah, but someone has to go first. Can give you a hug? Yeah, <laughs> totally. I do imagine a 15-year-old out there watching this and gleaning from you some kind of the insight that you wound up with, maybe without having to go through what you went through. That is, my, thank you for that, because that is my biggest hope in sharing my story, even if it's somebody who thinks, you know, my situation isn't the exact same, but maybe there's a point there. So thank you so much. It's just a ride. It's just a ride. The alternatives and nothingness might as well give it a try.